Hey, welcome. Have you ever wondered how you could fill up your tires on your cars and trucks a lot quicker? Save time, have it always available, not have to spend money on one of those little tiny little air pumps that you put, plug into your tire and it goes brrrr, makes a ton of noise, shuts off about 10 minutes later because it overheats. Have you looked at the off-road ones like the giant companies have, Power Tank and Smitty Built? Power Tank has a system just like this, but it runs anywhere between four and six hundred dollars, depending on the size. Smitty Built also has one. You can buy a system like this on Amazon for around three hundred dollars. You can buy the dual compressors from Arb that run several hundred dollars as well, three, four, five hundred dollars. You can buy the smaller compressor that runs a couple hundred dollars. Vires, there's all kinds of different options. All of those things have one thing in common. Um, they're expensive. Uh, and they're costly in the amount of time it takes to install some of those systems. Power tank obviously is just like this. The Smitty Bolt is just like this. But the ARB systems that you're going to mount in your vehicle, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You gotta kind of have to know what you're doing. Um, they're all really good systems. It's just that I'm cost conscious and budget minded and want to do something on my own. I wanted to do a DIY of that very system that they have, the power tank and the Smitty Belt. So here it is. It's my $175 CO2 inflatable build. What does it do? It inflates tires for one. It can inflate um, balls like soccer balls and basketballs and footballs. It can inflate air mattresses when you're going camping. It can inflate uh, rafts and things like that. It's just a great overall system. Uh, it also can run a nail gun and it can run an impact tool. So uh, if I take this off, uh, I can run an impact tool and a nail gun just by plugging it in right there. And this is a 150 PSI system. It's a fixed system and I know it works. So it's economical. It's small enough I can carry around in my truck it's small enough that my wife can carry around in her car. If a neighbor or a buddy calls and says that they need some help and they need some air compression tools or things like that, I don't have to take out my little Campbell um, compressor and air tank. I can just bring this if it's a small enough job. Also, for the off-road folks that are out there, the guys and girls that really like to take their tires down to 10, 11 PSI and then inflate them back up to 32 PSI, on a 35 inch tire, this can do that eight to nine times before it has to be refilled. Also, while somebody's sitting there with their little compressor plugged into their 12 volt and hooked up to their tire and it's going making that annoying noise, they're gonna sit there and wait 15, 20, 30 minutes per tire to get, get it aired up. This one's gonna do it less than a minute and a half. So in the time that they're doing one tire, I'm done with all four tires and I'm ready to go off the trail and get back to the campsite and have a few beers. So great system. Let's build it today. Let's get into the build list, what we're going to need to do to put it together, and then what we have to do to use it. All right, let's get into that build list. What things do we need to put this thing together? First thing we're going to need is a CO2 tank. And you want to make sure it's rated for CO2. And you want to make sure it has a CG320 valve on it. This one that I selected was five pounds. The reason I selected five pounds was that's plenty for the things that I need. I don't need a giant tank. Some of the big off-road guys and gals out there look for a 10, 15, or 20 pound tank just because of the volume of gas that they need to reinflate their tires when they're going off-road. I don't need anything that big, so I elected to go with a five pound because it's lighter, smaller, and fits everything that I, did, that I need to do on a regular basis. The other thing that I bought was this cool little curved handle here. I love it. And the reason I like it so much is because the standard carry handles for these CO2 tanks, I'm sure you've seen them, it just looks like a cone. But this one protects this regulator so you don't have to worry about it falling over and bending or breaking your regulator. So that's the reason I like this handle. You can go with the other handles. This one was $38.95. The regular ones you can buy anywhere from $5 to $15 on Amazon for these containers. 
it's up to you what you like and what you want to spend. But you can go real, really economically and buy one of those, or you don't have to buy any at all. You can just leave it with nothing here at all. So the other thing we're going to need are these couplers. Those are six ball bearing couplers. The reason I like using the six ball bearing couplers is because they do a better job of holding everything together and they don't let a whole bunch of air leak out when this hose moves back and forth as you're using it. So that's why I like that one. We're going to need this male to male adapter. And this goes between one of the couplers and the regulator. And then we need a hose end to plug into the other coupler. We'll also need some plumber's tape just for the threads on these when we put them together to make sure that they don't leak. We'll need a couple wrenches. And then we have this Allen wrench. This is a, a 5 16 Allen wrench and it's for these Allen screws back here on the back of this regulator handle. If you don't buy this handle, you don't need that 5 16 The other thing we need is a digital pressure gauge. The reason I bought this Astron AI, it, it was on Amazon. I've used it for a little while now. It's a really good product. It was only $28 or $29, and it came with a whole bunch of attachments. So I can do tires. I can do basketballs and footballs. Uh, I can do inflatables, all kinds of stuff. The other reason I liked it is it's got this right here. And what it does is you stick it on the valve of your tire, release this, and it holds it. And then I don't have to worry about holding this on. I can leave it on the tire, fill up, check my pressure, fill up, check my pressure, and I'm not messing around with that. And I don't have to take that on and off or worry about holding it in place and breaking my back holding that there. So that's everything we need to put this system together. So let's start wrenching and put this all into one piece so we can use it. Okay, so we've gone through the build list and we want to start putting this bad boy together. We're going to need this thread tape and we'll just put a little bit of this on here. You don't want to cover the hole up. Boom, that one side's done. Hold it in place. It's kind of hard to hold that in place. Uh, you know, if you're a plumber and you work with this stuff on a regular basis and you know how to hold this in place while you're doing it, feel free to leave me a tip. God, it's a, it can be an absolute pain in the butt. So, now I just come these two ends here. That's end number one. And then we'll go over here to end number two. I mean, it really is kind of simple. It's just frustrating how this tape works. Alrighty. So now, one end is going to get a coupler. And a bunch of you plumbers are going to absolutely cringe as I put that adjustable wrench on there. You're going to be like, that's going to scratch everything up. It is going to scratch everything up. but. It's a tool. It's meant to be scratched up. It's not meant to stay pretty. All right. On this side, we're going to want to use this fitting. All right, all you plumbers and perfectionists, cringe some more because I'm going to use this bad boy. Well, maybe I'm not going to use this bad boy if I can't get the right size. And we just want to snug these down. We don't want to crank them to where you can't move them anymore. But you can see the tape sticking out there a little bit, but that seals everything up so you won't have any CO2 escaping out of there. And that's all you want. So next is the regulator. We're just going to screw this bad boy in here. Nice and tight, tight, not over torqued. And then we're going to put this last coupler on this right here.
super simple. Alrighty, so we have all that tightened down. So those are all of our connections. Now left to do is attach that to the CO2 tank. We will test these connections out when everything's together and has gas in it. The way you do that, it's kind of neat, is you take a little bit of water and soap and put it together, mix it in a little bowl, and then drip over these connections. Put a little soap and water over that, and when it's got pressure, if there's any leaks, it'll actually make a bubble, almost like you're blowing bubbles like a kid. All right, so let's put this on here, and I can show you what this looks like. where I want it, right in the center there, and then crank this baby, baby down. There we go. Well, it's going to slip, so let's go a little bit smaller. There we go. Nice and tight. All righty. So everything's put together. The next thing we need to do is get some CO2 into this tank. All righty. We got it all put together. This is what the finished product looks like. One of the things we want to do actually before we get this filled is we want to take off um, this regulator right here and we want to weigh the tank with the handle and the uh, tank by itself so when they're filling it up they know how much they're putting in and they don't overfill it by mistake we'll also want to write that down the pre-weight on this with a sharpie just so they know but this is what it looks like when it's all put together Super simple when you want to hook it up. Boom. Whoop, wrong end. Boom. We're done. Now to use it, you just turn on the air. This will allow 150 PSI to come out. This will hold, hold it together, put it on the tire or whatever I'm inflating. Push down, allows it to inflate, release, gives me a reading. So really simple system to use. I love it. It's something that I can carry around with me and help people out. If somebody calls me and they have a, a breakdown or a tire breakdown or they need some help around the house or they need some trim, like I've got some trim work going on in my house right now. If I need to run a nail gun, this has got enough pressure to run the nail gun for a little while. So that's why I love this system. I hope you love it too. We'll talk to you later.